preach out for us. Want to sing Christmas songs? Yeah, praise the Lord. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare in room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven. Yeah. 
Amen. Simply rest upon the promises of God. That's what Jesus said. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He gives us rest from our fears. Yes, he he gives us rest from our trouble. He didn't say there wouldn't be no fear. Right. He didn't say there wouldn't be any trouble. Right. But He gives us rest from it. Amen. Because why? We fear the Lord. We trust the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're going to fear, fear the Lord. Hallelujah. Right. Amen. Amen. Bless His holy name. Yes. What a Savior right. that we have. Look with me, if you would, in the book of James this morning. The book of James. Amen. The half-brother of our, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't it amazing? Hallelujah. Isn't it amazing that God Himself became flesh? Isn't it amazing that God, who, who numbered all the stars, who uh, knows all the names of all the stars, who hung the earth upon nothing, who created the vast reaches of the universe, came in flesh just as you and I. Yes, amen. Amen. Just to consider, the Bible tells us, uh, uh, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Yes. And the son of man that thou visitest him? Right. Just to imagine, just to think about how that, that, that God Almighty, the Bible says that heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. Yes. He says, what house will you build for me to dwell in? Yet he comes and he dwells in the tabernacle of our bodies. That's what happened when Jesus came to this earth. He tabernacled. He came, amen, and He dwelt in a tabernacle. Hallelujah. You know that you are the tabernacle of the Holy Ghost? Amen. If you're right. saved this morning, you have the Spirit of God inside of you. Yeah. You're no longer your own. Yeah. Amen. But God dwells inside of you. We are partakers, not just of the old nature, we are partakers of the new nature, which is the divine nature of God. That we are partakers of the divine nature. That doesn't mean that your old nature isn't there, but which nature you decide that you're going to take heed, which nature you decide that you're going to feed, because it's all a choice. Amen. That's the one that'll, that'll have power. Amen. Because the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Jesus said that the flesh is weak. But the Spirit is willing. Amen. Amen. The Amen. Spirit is alive inside of us. Aren't you glad Amen. that He lives inside of us? James chapter 1, and beginning at verse 2, the Bible says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. I just want to pause for a second. This goes right along with Robin's lesson. Amen. Yeah. Their faith was tried when they were in that shipwreck. That's right. Amen. Glory be to God. But, but Paul said, I serve Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, I know Jesus is going to take care of me. He said the angel of the Lord came to him. Yeah. Amen. The angel of the Lord is Jesus. Yeah. Amen. He came to him and told him that there wouldn't be any loss save the ship. Amen. Wouldn't be any loss of any man's life but the ship. Mm -hmm. And he says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience, in other words, this is a choice. Let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low. Because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth, so also shall the rich man fade in his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, 
I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Let us pray together. Father Almighty, in the name of Jesus, what a privilege it is, Father God, Lord, to be able to gather in your name this morning. Father Almighty, what a privilege it is to read your word and, and to behold uh, uh, the, the words that you have given us, Father, that you have spoken into our hearts. We praise you, Father, for your Holy Spirit inside of us. Father God, for Lord, these words would mean nothing to us, Father, without your Spirit. And Father, we just thank you this morning, Father. Lord God, for opening our eyes and opening our hearts and helping us, Father God, to draw nigh to you, that, Father God, Lord, that we might understand you more, understand your will more for our lives, that we may give you honor, that we may give you glory, Father, that we may present our bodies a living sacrifice, dear Lord God, that we might glorify your name. And, Father, in Jesus' name we pray, and amen. The Word says here, uh, he says, Brethren, count it joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Yeah. Now, brother, this is contrary to, to the flesh. Yeah. The flesh, when it gets in a trial, the flesh, with this, these old bodies and these old minds, when a trial comes along, we want to say, woe is me. Oh, how terrible it is for me. Yeah. But glory be to God, us as Christians, we can look at trials, at temptations as opportunities. We can look at them as offered. This is an opportunity for God to show His power. Amen. This is an opportunity for God to manifest His glory right in the midst yeah. of a trial. Yeah. Hallelujah! That's how my God works. Yeah. You know what, Paul? You know what he looked at the chiefest of sinners as the Apostle Paul, Saul of Tarsus, before he was converted. He looked at him as an opportunity. He said, look at this chiefest of sinners. Hallelujah. Devil, let me show you my power. Amen. amen. In this man here. Amen. Let me show you my power. Amen. That's what he said to the devil. He says, hast thou considered my servant Job? Amen. Hallelujah. God, hallelujah, looks at problems as opportunities. Amen. And amen, that says how we as Christians can look at problems and troubles. Right. He said, count it all joy. When ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. In other words, patience doesn't just happen overnight. No, yeah. Amen? Even Paul said, I have learned in whatsoever state I am in, therewith to be content. I know how to be exalted, and I know how to be abased. Yeah. Hallelujah. And glory be to God. He, this is something that we learn, that when we are tried, it works patience patience inside of you know how important patience is jesus said in your patience possess ye your souls yeah. that's how important it is to have the patience of god the bible says that ye have heard of the patience of job amen yeah. hallelujah wait on the lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say unto the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Amen. Wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God will show his glory. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Let patience, let it choose to let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire Wanting nothing. Brother, I tell you <laughs> that if God doesn't want me to have it, I don't want it. If God doesn't want me to have it, if God hasn't given it to me yet, then I don't want it. I don't want something that this world's got for me. I want what God has. Amen. 
God, hallelujah, uh, brother, he knows what his children need. Yes, sir. Glory be to God. He says here, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. You know what wisdom is? It's, it's one thing to have knowledge about something, but it's another to have wisdom. Yes. You can know uh, uh, what a car is, uh, uh, brother, but unless you take that key and put it in the car and start it and drive down the road, it doesn't do you any good to know about a car. Right. Brother, uh, you can know uh, what the Word of God says, but until you take the Word of God and you put it inside of your heart, uh, and when you are tried, uh, you say, I'm going to live by what God gave me to live by, and I'm going to use what God gave me. That's wisdom. Amen. That's wisdom, Amen. glory, hallelujah. To use what God has given. Glory be to God. Yes. If, any, if, if, if we lack this, any of us, that's what he said, if any of us lack wisdom, Ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. God's not going to give you just a little bit. Amen. When God does something, brother, he does it right. Amen. Hallelujah. He, I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be uh, added to it nor anything taken from it, and God does it that men should fear before him. That came from the wisest of kings, Solomon. Amen. He said, you can't take anything away from what God's done. And you can't add nothing to what God's done. Amen. God does it forever. Hallelujah. And so the Bible tells us here, if we ask of God, he'll give it. The, that's what the psalmist said in Psalm 23. He said, my thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. I can't contain what God gives. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're full of the Holy Ghost, you can't hold him in. Amen. He comes out. Jesus said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Uh, and out of his belly shall flow rivers uh, of living water. Hallelujah. That's, right. That's your heart. Jesus is talking about the heart. Amen. Out of your heart will flow rivers of living water. Jesus, hallelujah, gives us liberally. But the Bible says, let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with wind and tossed. Now listen, this is, this is important this morning in verse 7. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Brother, you know what faith is? Faith is when you, you cannot see anything. Uh, you cannot see uh, the, the, the evidence. You cannot see oh, that, that, it, that it's, it's possible in the carnal nature, but you believe uh, that what God said will come to pass. Right. Even though there's evidence that's contrary to it. Even if there's something contrary uh, to what uh, God has promised you, you're going to believe it. Listen, uh, they were in a ship and there came a great tempest uh, and it was beating on that ship where Paul and those soldiers were. Uh, and those soldiers were afraid. Uh, but God said, I'll not let your life perish. Amen. Amen. And they be Paul believed the Lord right. even though he was surrounded by a storm. Even though there was evidence contrary to what he believed. Amen? Yeah, Brother, right. the things that we see are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. Amen. Amen. The things, glory be to God, that the enemy tries to tempt us with, and he tries to test us with, and he tries to make us fear with. Uh, but brother, glory be to God, we'd all be better if we just close our eyes uh, and say, I see Jesus standing on the right hand uh, of the Father. Amen. Uh, Jesus is right there, hallelujah, to deliver us from evil. Amen. Jesus is right there to deliver us through the storm. Oh, when Jesus calmed the storm and they said, Oh, what manner of man is this? Yeah. That even the winds and the seas obey him. Listen, it's important that when we pray, that we believe in faith, yeah. that God will perform what he has promised. For brother, if we don't believe and truly believe in faith that God will perform his word, the Bible says, let not that man think that he'll receive anything. Anything. Right. That means anything, brother. It doesn't mean just one thing. But that means anything from the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
Hallelujah. You know God loves to give gifts. Sure. God loves to give. He is the greatest gift giver there is. Amen. He is the greatest gift giver. Folks, you know, even youngins look for what they might receive on Christmas. But listen, there is no greater gift than what God gives. Amen. No greater Amen. gift. The Bible goes on and he tells us, uh, uh, if we skip on down here to verse 17, every good and every perfect gift is from above. Now that said every good and every perfect gift. Didn't say every gift. People quote that scripture wrong. They say, oh, every gift's from God. No. No, it's not. Every good and every perfect gift is from above, from the Father of lights, and whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. My God does not change. That's right. Amen. This world changes. You and I might change, but God never changes. That's right. Amen. Amen. As a matter of fact, I hope there's been a change in you since you've been saved. Amen. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become as new. Yeah. I'm so glad, amen, that each and every day is new in Jesus. It's not old. It's new. Amen. I wake up tomorrow morning and it's new in Jesus tomorrow morning. The Bible said in Lamentations chapter 3 that it is of the Lord's mercies that were not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Every morning you can be new in Jesus. Oh, yeah. Paul said, I die daily. Amen. Isn't it yeah. good? Hallelujah. But amen. You might have had a terrible day yesterday, but you can wake up this morning and you can say, this is the day yeah. that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. And then this, what God has given. He has given us this day. Hallelujah. Every good and every perfect gift. Coming from above. Oh, bless the Lord. When the Lord created earth, the Bible said God saw that it was good. Yeah. Everything that God makes is good yeah. and perfect. Hallelujah. I tell you, if God doesn't give it, I don't want it. That's right. I don't want it. If He hasn't given it to me yet, if He hasn't given it to you yet, then you don't need it. That's right. You don't need it, brother. Yeah. And the, now, the devil will try to tempt you. Yeah. And he'll try to thank you, make you think, well, God's not giving to you what you need. Listen, my heavenly Father, the Bible told me that he gives to all men liberally that's right. and he upbraids not. My heavenly Father supplies. Yes, oh, that's what the Bible said there in Psalm 34, huh? that the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Glory be to God, my heavenly Father provides yes, for his children. What a wonderful Savior that we have. You see, there's so many in this world today that are deceived by riches. There was, some, uh, there was two brothers that came to Jesus in Luke chapter 12. They came to Jesus and they were arguing with one another over an inheritance. Yeah. They were arguing over temporal things. Yeah. You know, it's, it's temporal things that a lot of folks will give up Temporal things that, that, that will destroy a lot of families. Yeah, that's right. Temporal things that destroy a lot of churches. Folks get their eyes on things that are perishing. Yeah, that's right. They get their eyes on things that are vain instead of their eyes upon Jesus. The Bible says to mark the perfect man and to behold the upright for the end of that man is peace. Amen. To keep our eyes on Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. These temporal things won't even matter. They, wanted, they, they came to Jesus and they said to him, Master, speak to my brother that he might divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not of the things which he possesseth. Amen. Jesus said, look, be, beware. Amen. This is a warning from Jesus. Jesus said, look, you can easily be deceived by covetousness. And he says that, that, that uh, he, he began to speak a parable. And he said unto them, saying, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. 
And I will say to my soul, Saul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself, and is not rich toward God. Here is a man that wanted to have everything that he could possibly get so that he could say, I don't have to worry anymore. I don't have to worry. I don't have, I don't have to fear anymore because I've got all of this stuff put up. And I can take my ease and I can eat and drink and be merry. Right. But, God, but Jesus said that the Lord said to him, Thou fool, right. this night your soul is going to be required of you. Amen. Brother, I tell you uh, that we're just here for a little while. Amen. We're just here for a short time. Uh, the grass withereth and the flower thereof falleth away. Uh, uh, the Bible tells us that, uh, uh, that glory be to God that we're just a vapor. Our life is just a hand span in the midst of things. And glory be to God, the Bible said here that this rich man, uh, uh, that, that God said, what is all these things going to be worth to you now? When you have lost your soul. That's right, amen. Jesus said, He says, oh, What shall a man, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Right. You see, a man may think, Well, if I could just get all of these things, and they're deceived, brother, by the deceitfulness of riches and the cares of this life, and those things uh, deceive them, and their mind is no longer on the Lord. They have lost faith in what Christ has performed for them. Jesus says here, beware of this. Beware of these things that are coming. Beware of these temptations. Look, I would rather today, I would rather, glory be to God, go through this world knowing that my Heavenly Father is going to provide manna from heaven tomorrow than I would lay it up today. That's right. Lay it up today. Lay up treasures in this world today and trust in those that can be taken from me. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible tells me to lay up treasures in heaven where moth and rust cannot corrupt and where thieves cannot break through and steal. Amen. That if our treasures are laid in heaven, brother, it can't be taken from us. Our, the, what Christ and what God gives cannot be taken from us. Brother, glory be to God. I'm glad for what Christ has given us and what God gives. It would, it would be better today uh, to, to not have any idea what going you're going to have tomorrow and, and to go through today having faith and complete reliance upon God Almighty than it would to have something put back and to be trusting in ourselves. That's right. it, would be, it would be better for us. Brother, that's what faith is. That's what faith, the Bible says in Ephesians 2 and verses 28, that for by grace are ye saved through faith. Brother, the just lives by faith. It is so critical this morning that we live by faith. The Bible tells us in Proverbs, look with me if you would, in Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30. This is one of the most, one of the most critical teachings of today's society uh, that you can ever get. Look, uh, I'm thankful this morning for what God gives us. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 30, the Bible says in verse 7, Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 7, two things have I required of thee, deny me them not before I die. The wisest of kings that ever lived upon this earth says two things have I asked of you, Lord. Deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. In other words, he doesn't want to he doesn't want to have he doesn't want to be surrounded by lies. He doesn't want to have lies coming from him. He says, give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Lest I be full and deny thee and say, who is the Lord? That's what happened to the rich man in Luke chapter 12. Yeah. He had so much 
He says, well, who's the Lord? Mm -hmm. That's what Pharaoh said. Pharaoh said, well, who is the Lord that I should fear him? Yeah. yeah. So he says here, he says, don't give me, he said, lest I be full and deny thee and say, who is the Lord? In other words, he has so much, he has been blessed with so much that he doesn't no longer need to rely on God from day to day. No longer seems to need to rely on God. He says, lest I be full and deny thee and say, well, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. He says, Lord, give me what I need. Right. Just give me what I need. Right. God loves to provide yes. for his children. You know, we see that Jesus told us, he said, to beware of covetousness. He said, beware of these things. Beware of this, of this deceiving, uh, deceit, deceitful sin, this lust of the flesh, covetousness. But there's one place in the Bible, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where it is a command to covet. Do you know that? There's, there's a, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, at verse 31, there is a command to covet. It's okay to want the right things. It's okay to want the right things. It's not okay to covet worldly things. But it's all right to covet godly things. It's okay to want those things. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 37 and verse 4, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and He shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Glory be to God. A lot of folks want to use that for a reason uh, to get worldly things, but glory be to God, I tell you that what God gives you will be eternal. What the world gives you is temporal. That's right. It's just for a little while. Amen. What God gives, brother, it's eternal and it stays. Yes, it is. The Bible says here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, He says, Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. We are all part of the members of the body of Christ. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondly prophets, thirdly teachers after that miracles, and then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing. Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? In verse 31 he says, but covet earnestly, covet earnestly the best gifts. And yet I show unto you a more excellent way. Now there's a division in our Bibles. There's a division between this and the next chapter. Those divisions weren't there originally. That's just for us. That's just to help us. It goes from chapter 12 to chapter 13 and he begins to teach on love. This is the greatest gift you can ever have. Yes. The greatest gift you can ever have is the love of God. That's right. Amen. That is the great... He Amen. says, yet I show unto you a more excellent way. I tell you, brother, all things are, are, are lawful, but all things are not expedient, brother. It is important, amen, that we have uh, uh, the things that are important in our life. The number one thing that we should have is the love of God of God. I had brother to covet the best gifts of God. Number one, he goes into verse into chapter 13 and he says, though I speak with the tongues of, of men and of angels and have not charity, he said, I'm a kind of sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Yeah. You can have all kinds of things. You can be able, you can have all kinds of talent. You can do all kinds of things. You can say all kinds of things, but glory be to God if you don't have the love of God in your heart. It's vanity. That is the most important gift that you'll ever have is the love of God. Yes, it is. And brother, I tell you, it, it is a wonderful provision to have the love of God in your heart because even though you might end up alone in this world, you know, David, David's father Jesse, there came a time when it was time for him to die. And there was a time for David's mother to pass away. And you know but what David said in Psalm 27? He says, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord 
will take me up. There's many of us here this morning whose mothers and fathers have passed on. You know what? But the Lord will take you up and He'll carry you in His hand. Amen. The Bible said that my sheep hear me and they know my voice and they follow me and they shall never perish and I give unto them eternal life. He says, no man plucks them from my hand. I and my Father are one. Hallelujah. Then glory be to God that you're in the hands of God Almighty. And brother, that is the greatest comfort that you can have is having that provision from God. Regardless of what you see temporally, but what you know and believe in your heart is what matters this morning. Look with me if you would. Now this is one of the most important verses in the Bible. This is one of the most important Bible verses in Romans chapter 8 and verse 32. This is, this is one of the most important scriptures in the Bible concerning God's care for His children. Paul believed this. Paul believed this. And brother, he didn't just write it down. He didn't just hear it. It wasn't just hearsay. But he truly believed what this says. In Philippians chapter 4, he had put it in practice. He says, But my God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You see, there's many folks who leave that part out. There's many folks who leave out the, the complete meaning and the context of what God is saying. Paul declared the whole counsel of God. He said that my God shall apply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Here was a, there was a church that had given to Paul and brother, they, they didn't hardly have anything to give. And there, and there, there was concern about what, how they were going to make ends meet. But Paul said, my God will supply what you need by Christ Jesus. That brother, when we are in Jesus, God takes care of His people. All right. Romans 8 and 32. Now listen this morning. It is amazing to me. I, can't, I just can't get over it, Brother Jim. That God would prophesy through the entire Old Testament of His Son coming. That he would prophesy of a Messiah. Now listen, this is even in, Dan in the book of Daniel that Messiah would be cut off, but not for himself. That the Messiah was going to come. The Messiah, the ruler, uh, the, a great uh, a victorious king would come and that he would be cut off. Yeah. That he would suffer, but not for himself, but he would suffer for those others. The Bible says here in Romans chapter 8 and verse 32 that he, look, look at it with me, Romans 8 and verse 32, look at it with me. There's power in looking at the written word of God. There's, listen, I, don't take what I tell you, but take what God says this morning. The Bible says that he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall He not with Him also freely give us all things? What are all things? That's everything. Amen? Then brother, if we, if, we, if we have doubt, if we have fear of whatever may come, and brother, whether it's food, or whether it's raiment, or whether it's a home, or whether it's a church, whether it's fellowship, whether it's salvation, uh, or whether it's a spiritual gift, uh, or whether it's a blessing from on high, that uh, brother, if God didn't spare the very best that He had, if God didn't spare His only begotten Son, uh, who was born of a virgin, a miracle birth, uh, that came to this world and lived a perfect life without sin, and spared not Him, but let Him go to an old rugged cross and be beaten, uh, a brother to where He was unrecognizable, uh, and let them hang Him on a cross uh, and to take all of our sin and shame upon Him. Amen. What? What are our concerns and our fears compared to that? Right. What are our sins and our what what are our what are our fears and our and, our, and, and the things that come upon us that, that we may think that we need? What are those compared to Jesus and what Jesus has done? Right. If he that spared not his own son, 
but delivered him up for us all. Right. How shall we not with him? Listen, here is the one point. This is the same point as Paul said that by Christ Jesus, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The Bible says, how shall he not with him? That's what it says, with him also freely give us all things. You see, when we have the Spirit of Christ inside of our life, we live our lives differently. We walk differently. We talk differently. We think differently because we meditate upon what Jesus told us and we believe what Jesus told us. And God will with Him supply what we need. Amen. He will give perfect and good gifts from on high. Amen. God will supply it. Amen. You say, well, Troy, I, 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 I just don't see how it will happen. Brother, that's where faith comes in. If you can't see it, faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Not seen. not seen. not seen. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. God testifying of His offering. Amen. God testified about what <coughs> offering that Abel gave. Glory be to God. I'm so glad for the promises of God. I'm so glad, amen. I love, I love the old song that we would sing. Standing on the promises yeah. of Christ my King. Hallelujah. It's good to stand upon the promises of God and to believe it. You say, I can't see it. Well, good. Your, your, your faith is being tested. If you can't see it, and glory be to God, God is trying to refine your faith. God is allowing your faith to be refined. I'm so glad for that this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Here is another important, very important scripture. Even the one scripture that we read from Numbers chapter 24 earlier about where uh, Balaam was prophesying under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And he was prophesying. The Bible said that he said, God is not a man that he should lie. He says, neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? You know, whatever God says, God tells the truth. Because it's impossible for God to lie. It's impossible for God to lie. Look with me. 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 18. But as God is true. God's true, isn't he, Brother Jim? Yeah. He don't lie, does he? But as God is true, our word towards you was not yea and nay. He says God's word toward, uh, toward us is not, well, maybe sometimes yes and maybe sometimes no. That isn't the way God is. God doesn't say, I'm going to do it for you today, but I'm not going to do it tomorrow. That isn't what the way God works. He says, but our word towards you was not yea and nay, for the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timotheus, was not yea and nay, but in him, in Jesus, was yea. He says it's not yes and no. It's not sometimes yes and it's not sometimes no. In Jesus, it's yes. The answer is yes. That's what it's saying right here. That's what the scripture says. In him was yes. For all the promises, for all the promises of God in him, listen, in him are yea and in him, amen, under the glory of God by us. All the promises of God in Jesus Christ are yes. Amen. Every one of them. Hallelujah. That means every promise. There isn't one promise that God has made that will fail in Jesus. Hallelujah. You know what we need? We need to be in Jesus. <laughs> oh, glory. We need to have Jesus in us and we need to be in Jesus and let, hallelujah, God do the work. Let God be the one that receives the glory. Listen, your problem is an opportunity for God. It's an opportunity. The problems we have as a congregation, the problems we have as a family, the problems we have as individuals. It's an opportunity. 
I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. This poor man cried and the Lord delivered him out of all his fears. Oh, hallelujah. What a wonderful Savior we have. Yes, we do. What a wonderful Savior we have. God loves to give gifts. Loves. You know, the devil pays wages, but God gives gifts. Sure. Matthew chapter 7, Jesus tells us, he says, if you ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Listen, there is many today who say, well, I prayed for something and it didn't happen. Does that mean I didn't have faith? Listen, listen this morning. We need the whole word of God. Paul Hallelujah, I'm so glad for Paul that he was, he was one of the greatest missionaries. He is the greatest missionary this world ever knew besides Jesus. Amen? But the Bible said that he prayed and he asked the Lord. He said, Lord, three times I besought the Lord that he would take this thorn of, thorn of my flesh. He says, he says, unless I should be exalted above measure. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. Now, doesn't that sound like what happened with Solomon in Proverbs chapter 30? Don't give me too much to where I deny the Lord and say, well, who is the Lord? Paul said there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. He says, for this thing I besought the Lord three times that it would depart from me. But Jesus said, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Yes. You see, Paul didn't get an answer of no. Jesus said, my grace is your answer. Yes. My grace is your answer. The answer was yes. Mm -hmm. The answer was yes. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' grace was the answer. He said, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Paul said, well, hallelujah, I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to rejoice in my infirmities. For when I'm weak, then am I strong. It was when Jesus was hanging on the cross that God's glory was shown the greatest. It was when Jesus hung there and he, and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. It was there. It was there when he saved the thief that was beside him that God's glory was shown the greatest. Amen. It was when Jesus descended into the lower parts of the earth uh, and overcame death, hell, and the grave that God's glory yeah. was yeah. shown the greatest. Amen. It was through that opportunity that God's glory shined, hallelujah, through all eternity. That, your, your, your problem is an opportunity to God. I'm so glad for that this morning. Hallelujah. Every good and every perfect gift cometh from above. That's right. Amen. The greatest gift the world has ever known is our Savior Jesus. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever, that means you and me, that means purple, yellow, red, black, white, that means every language, every nationality, whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm so glad today. I tell you, if my hope was only here, I'd be miserable. Yeah. But I'm so glad that, amen, that hallelujah, my heart is in heaven. Oh, my body's still here, but my heart's in heaven. Uh, he says, where your treasures are there, will your heart be also. Uh, my heart has a longing to go home. Uh, amen. Uh, this world's not my home. I'm just a passer through. I'm just a pilgrim and a 
a sojourner upon this earth for a short time. And brother, the time that we're here is to give glory and honor to God Almighty. Psalm chapter 37 and verse, 20, verse 25 said, I've been young and am now old, and I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Oh, brother, Jesus, in Jesus, he will supply our needs. Yes, he will. God loves to take care of his children. Amen. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you, my Savior God. We praise you, Father, for Jesus. And dear Lord, that you, dear Lord God, though we were uh, undeserving, Father, you brought your Son here, that while we were yet sinners, you sent Christ to die for us and for our sins. And Father, we praise you for that, and we thank you for that this morning. We thank you, Father God, Lord, that having the truth in our hearts, Father God, that we're made free from fear, free from oppression, and free from troubles, Father God, through the grace of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for that this morning. And Lord, we just want to give you glory and honor and praise. For Father, you are worthy. And we thank you, Father, for sending your only begotten Son. Help us, I pray, each and every one, Father, uh, that we might uh, draw closer to you and live your words which you've given us, Father. That, Lord God, we wouldn't walk in doubt. That we wouldn't walk in fear or in shame. But we would look unto you. And that our faces would be enlightened, dear Lord and that we would not be ashamed of what Jesus has done for us. And Father, I give you all the glory and the praise forevermore in Jesus' name. And amen. amen. Robin, would you mind to get us an invitation song? If you're here this morning and you desire to ask of the Lord, I encourage you to come and ask of Him. But ask in faith, nothing wavering. Amen. God loves to take care of His children. You can ask the Lord to listen this morning. If you're unable to come forward, you can pray right there where you're at because God is everywhere. Yes, and amen. He, the, the Lord, amen. I'm so glad that He's able to save. He's able to work under the uttermost. It doesn't matter. Amen. God is able to hear and to answer each and every one of His children. How about one friend we have in Jesus? Amen. That sounds good. 138. 138. Mm -hmm.
henceforth I call you not servants, but I call you friends. Amen. Mm -hmm. Jesus is our friend this morning. He's the greatest friend I've ever had. Amen. He's never forsaken me. He's never done me wrong. Never. Not even one time. Yeah. Praise the Lord. What a Savior we have. What a friend we have. Come on, let's praise the Lord. <laughs> Brother Jim, would you lead us, please, brother? Praise, Praise the Lord, Lord. Praise, Praise mercy and God of friend. Praise, Praise.